All right, so we got some more uh, SR parts today. We told you we'll take you along this journey here. And uh, we've watched other people build them too, so it's, it's always cool to document the stuff so you can look back at it when it blows up. So, uh, pistons came in, and uh, we'll go over that. And here's the, uh, pull one of those out of the bag, buddy. I don't want to get dirty. I already took a shower. And, uh, here's one of the manly rods. This is what we uh, choose for this build. And it's got the, uh, it's got the 2000 bolts in it, the ARP upgrades. And uh, we talked a little bit about bolts this morning. And uh, I'll show you a little information you don't usually get when you buy an aftermarket Chinese rod or something at a lower cost than like a, a quality name like Manly or Potter or you know a name brand uh, Scat. When you buy a Volkswagen set of rods, you need to check them. I've always had to have them resized before I put them in the motor when they're new. I can't talk about you know how their American car stuff is. So I do know the uh, Manleys are pretty good quality and it's a definite step up from what we had. So here's a, a look at the pistons. You got the upgraded pins. Did you get rings? Mm -hmm. You got rings. The pins are in the bag still. And uh, here's the piston. It's a Wiseco. Wiseco. We call them Wiseco's because they come from China now. I actually say Japan on top. Oh, really? Well, that's yeah. cool. They used to be uh, manufactured in the U.S., but Japan's better than uh, China, I guess. And everybody used Japan to. Somewhere cringe when they'd see Japan on something. I didn't see anything on the top of the piston except part number. Anyway, uh, looks like they already weighed them. But Hans will double double check it, weigh them. He pointed out that they do have the uh, clearance here for the uh, oil squirter, which uh, some brands don't have. You have to cut that and then rebalance the piston. The skirts are coated with a molly coating. And uh, of course they have the uh, Wiseco insignia engraved. You can see that this piston has a really tiny ring pack in it, so super light drag on the cylinder. The thinner you make this, of course, the less drag you're going to have on the cylinder wall. So this is probably going to be a pretty good choice. We use these in the uh, Volkswagens. And what was the size on this? 85.6, you said? 86.5. 86.5. So, you know, Volkswagen, a factory uh, jug is 85.6. So you could probably hone a set of uh, Volkswagen cylinders out and maybe come up with some, I don't know, pen location would be wrong and everything. But anyway, this is what we're doing for this project and uh, pretty happy with the quality. We didn't weigh it or anything yet so we run into anything we'll we'll share it with you. So that's that for that. Uh, here's the uh, invoice Hans wanted me to point out that he paid for him. So, <laughs> so, there you go. You happy? Yeah. All right, he is paying for this stuff himself. He's got a job and he's doing all kinds of cool stuff. Here's some information that comes with the uh, piston, which you're not going to be able to read because it's terrible reflection here going on from the uh, lighting in here. But anyway, that's the uh, one instruction notice. We'll go over all this when we check our piston to wall clearance and get into setting our rings. We'll go over all these instructions when we do the assembly of the engine. Uh, one of my videos this morning I talked a little bit about bolt stretch and uh, torquing the bolts. And if you bought a set of uh, cheaper rods you might not get this information. Uh, this is pretty much a sheet that tells you everything you need to go over when you uh, install an aftermarket rod into a OE block. You know they uh, have the side clearance minimums that they want there. And I didn't really look this over I'm just I'm just I pretty much know what's on here. And I did have Hans look and see the stretch number and it was five to six uh, for our particular application it's a three inch three eighths uh, ARP bolt and uh, they want sixty foot pounds is the torque and they want five to six thousand stretch so uh, they want you to use thirty weight oil for the uh, torque it's very important that you lubricate the fastener so you get an accurate uh, reading on the uh, the torque and uh, you know it's got an ARP bolt they make a, a lube uh, Manley's asking for 30 weight motor oil I know ARP does have their own lube for their rod bolts so we'll have to make a decision on that and you know that's the kind of stuff you just gotta 
read the instructions and sort of uh, take it in and then make your decisions yourself you know you just take this information and use it the best you can but uh, they want it submerged in 30 weight oil they even have uh, right there it says bolt stretch so let me see if I can find it I think that's it you can freeze that you can pause it let me back it up and that pretty much tells you about the bolt stretch and how important it is uh, standard ARP fasteners this time just like we had last time same stuff we got anything special in here uh, just, head studs. just head studs so we're going to be using the studs when you put these studs see the stud kit here comes with uh, instructions a lot of guys like to torque these down in the block. You don't never do that. It's finger tight into the block. You know, you don't want to torque it down into the block. But uh, pretty standard. It's got washers, got stud kit, and then here's the uh, fastener assembly lubricant that I was talking about when we were looking at the manly instructions. But, uh, so that's that. I don't know if you bought these or not. Did you buy these? They're on that too, he says. Okay. What do we got here? Anything good? Uh, Coated bearings, right? Yeah. So we need to uh, we need to assemble a rod bearing in one of the rods, and uh, we're gonna check the uh, rod to uh, bearing clearance. And Hans is gonna do all this this time himself. He's uh, quite capable of it. He knows what to check for. And what I would recommend if you're gonna build a motor like this and spend this kind of money, get a blank piece of paper and take notes. Uh, you know, when I build a Volkswagen motor, I don't get built, I don't usually charge to take notes on a stocker. Uh, you know, most of the clearances are pretty much factory. But when you build a motor like this, you're going to have clearances that aren't factory setting. So it's good to document each setting. That way, when you take the motor apart, you can measure how much wear you have. Or if it works really good, you have a good sheet, a good starting point for your next project. So. Good thing to note is that uh, Wiseco and Manly both don't come with warranties. If you fuck it up, you eat it. Well, it's a performance part. So, Sorry. yeah. So, you know, there we go. We got the block taped off for some reason. But we're going to have to uh, either paint that or untape it so we can do the uh, measurements we need to do. And we're going to have to install the crank in there. I saw they got new thrust bearings for the crank and uh, the Tomy head gasket you guys have already seen. Anthony was saying there's a way to cheat the uh, timing with the duty cycle on the injectors. But I think we've already reached the duty cycle of that injector. So we're gonna, yeah, we're going 1,000 cc's instead so, of 400. So we're going to bump the injector size up double. So we'll have a bigger window. Our window was just so narrow on the tune before there was really not much tuning at all to it. So going to try to make it more tunable and uh, make it live. If it blows up this time, it'll be from horsepower, you know, not from a improper tune up oh, break so. the transmission place. and then uh we still got to get a boost controller probably and we're going to do that and stuff like that but uh needs accessories the block is done the block's done yeah i got the crank got the rods got the pistons got the rings so we can build a short block now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so anyway that's the update i don't know what we're doing with the uh he needs to take this apart on the floor he said he was going to take that apart so well, I'm semi healthy and happy right now. I can port that and finish that. And we might get an aftermarket plenum for it. I don't know how available are those not. Well, no, it just works good. Just works good. We'll go ahead and just port that, clean it up, match it to the throttle body, and just basically mm -hmm. blueprint that then. You know what fits on that really good? It's a Mustang throttle body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you might need that with 1,000 cc injectors. You know, you're going to have to get some more air moving in the motor for sure. So anyway, there's our uh, cylinder head. So, still haven't got any, uh, what are we doing with this? We're gonna do the stock valves, stock resize valves them. Unless I don't, springs, I don't. we gotta at least buy springs because they yeah, were, the, the springs were shitty. So, there we go, we got the uh, flywheel. This is, is this the one we're using here? This one probably needs to get the assembly, uh, you need to measure the uh, rods and pistons together with the ring packs and record the weight. And then you can take the crankshaft, pressure plate, the flywheel, and the bob weight, which means the crank or the uh, rods and piston combination, 
and we're gonna have it balanced because this is a new flywheel and aftermarket. Yeah, it's a XZD 14 com flywheel. Yeah, so we need to have the assembly balanced with the uh, piston and rod combination and this being new to the crankshaft. Mazworks does all kinds of things. Mazworks, so. That's important too, you know, if you're gonna interchange all these uh, parts, you know, you're gonna go with an aftermarket flywheel and then aftermarket pistons and rods, it's gonna change your uh, rotating mass weight as far as your piston and rod combination. So it's a good idea to take your balancer, your flywheel, your pr pressure plate that you're gonna use, your bob weight or your piston and rods and have it all balanced as an assembly so it doesn't shake the car apart. Uh, you know, you could probably put it all together and have good luck with it. So I'm sure there's guys have done it. So but we're going to balance this one because it's seventy-five dollars to balance the motor. I think it's not much. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, I think Massworks balances up to like twelve thousand RPM. Yeah, and we won't be turning. Well, maybe ten. I don't know. Maybe It'll not. Be ten. Ten probably. Anyway, there's another look at the head. Some guys that haven't looked at it. I'm going to let Hans title this one. Because I'm sure I've been titling the videos improperly. Yeah, there's not a space between SR and 20. It's one thing. Okay. Well, you can go in and correct that stuff. Eh? You can edit the channel anytime you want. Yeah, I'm lazy. But anyway, there you go. That's what we're going to start with. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, you know, I think it looks nice. You could pay for shit here. Trust me. <laughs> We've seen some stuff. Anything cool on the bottom of the block or is it all taped off too? It's completely sealed up. That's stock block stuff. You got new rails for the timing chain. We're going to use new chains. What's the I plan? Gotta get, I got to get a timing chain guide kit, which is 100 bucks. Get some metal rails instead of plastic rails. You get an S15 timing chain tensioner. And the chain doesn't change. It just gets newer. So we're not using any of the old bullshit on that yeah, other it's all broken, yeah. When parts stop the motor, it, it hurts stuff. Yeah. The only thing I might reuse at first is cams. There's our old uh, exhaust manifold. Now, this didn't work out too good for us because the uh, quality of the metal is not very good and it kept losing the studs. Well, yeah, and also, um, the great guys at eBay made the runners too short in the middle. So you can't actually get bolts in there. Yeah, so this thing was a constant pain in the ass. And, uh, you know, it pissed him off so bad that he just ended up welding the uh, wastegate to the manifold. So yeah, that's useless. Yeah. Well, you know, you consult somebody else, I guess, and aggravate them with it. it the wastegate still operates, believe it or not. It works fine. But yeah, it's uh, kept falling apart. sucks because I could use that for the little streetcar. Uh, Another question, we looked at the header earlier in another video, and uh, the new header, is it a top mount or a bottom mount? Yeah, it's a top mount. This Just sits mid back. Right, yeah, this sits right next to the valve cover, actually, so you can't get a big turbo on it. Like, that wouldn't fit. It hit the valve cover. So this gets moved over here. So it's not going to be next to the brake booster. That was no. the problem with this in the turbo housing. Yeah, this is so you can put a 3-inch downpipe on it and make a lot of horsepower. There you go. Yep. Eventually, I mean, we'd like to use that TO4. I know it doesn't look pretty, but it's hauled ass on my bug. It's been, it's been 11 flat, 1090, you know, 130, 40 miles an hour. Basically, the new exhaust manifold says fuck accessories, make horsepower. So they're probably yeah. steering no AC. Well, you got to drive it. I don't. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's where we're at. I'll go ahead and shut this off. We'll upload it. There's the thrust bearings. And uh, we'll update you when we get something else going here. And uh, when he starts the blueprinting process, when he gets that painted or untaped, we'll uh, start doing the journal. We'll show you what to record, and uh, we'll record it together. So if you guys are doing this for the first time, you can uh, have a little starting point. You know, we've already blown one up, so they only make so much power from the factory, and they're really good. If you're going to buy one of these and you don't mess with it, it's a really good motor, right? They make 190 to 220 stock. So when you start making 350, 400, the rod's going to come out of it and you're going to have bad stuff. And Because at that point you're really, uh, you're cheating the wiring harness, you're trying to cheat the injectors to run full blast. Yeah, actually, one of the things that you have to change is you have to get a new mass airflow sensor because the stock one is off a single cam motor that's made in the States. This is off a twin turbo turner ZX. Okay. So it's, uh, it's like an inch wider. There we go, the whole, you know, more airflow thing. And it's for more horsepower. So. And then when you make more horsepower and want to be reliable, you change things like this. The stock pickup doesn't have the slots cut inside of it, so it oil stars if you have it sideways. 
So like if you really want to make work make it work good is you drill holes in the side of this too. Yeah. Well we need to modify that. The problem is this has got a screen in it, so when you modify it, it's gotta be really careful to get all the debris out of it. And uh, that's something that we'll have to think about how to do. You know, maybe put air in here while you're drilling the hole so it's blowing out. Go just punch it too. Yeah. But uh this always gets smashed and you should always try to incorporate a, a a sump or a bigger pan on these oil capacity is not really good and it's when it gets a little bumped it just closes off that sump and yeah, the oil it's like three quarts from the factory yeah so three quarts isn't enough oil to do much you know you run into the same issue with uh you just have not enough capacity to uh cool and return to the bearing so with the added capacity and maybe even a cooler you know it'd be a it's really good a, idea it's getting a aftermarket sump and the uh, oil cooler so it'll be like four and a half quarts yeah so and the other thing is is you know most of these cars are pretty low and when you bump into something that sump just gets completely blocked off by the pan yeah, that's the cool thing about the cast ones is they shatter so you know exactly what happens yeah the oil's out of the motor so it's better to lose all the oil out of the motor and you know you no, know, something's wrong, right? Slowly. Because you know it doesn't. The gauge still has oil pressure. It's when you rev the motor up and it cavitates. Yeah, you can always fix that with an AccuSump too. Yeah. Well, we can buy all that stuff and do videos as we go. I know there's a really nice AccuSump for sale for 120 bucks, a trick one, it's not an old school, but all you know, valved and electronic. Mm. It's on the uh, eBay or something. I don't forget. All right. So I don't know. Well, until next time, it's a little bit of upgrade. We'll uh, keep showing you the parts as it goes. And uh, that's that video. Y'all have a good day. Push the record button and uh, show us what you're building.